Unity 6.1 is officially here, and I've got the complete breakdown of everything that is new with this release. Hey everyone, it's Fistful of Shrimp, I'm back after my very long and exhausting move, and I am back to guide you through all things that are Unity, game development, VR development, all those forms of development. Today we're going to be diving into what was just released, Unity 6.1, and their big update that's dropped this morning. So whether you are working on mobile games, PC titles, or VR experiences like myself, there's a lot to unpack with this release. So let's dive in. Now the first thing I want to talk about is their new release model. Unity has talked about that they want to do more incremental releases with Unity 6.0, 6.1, 6.2, 6.3, and then eventually getting up to the big jump of Unity 7. And with the release of 6.1 today, it looks like they are following through on their promise. So let me break it down for you and how this is going to work out, or at least according to Unity, how it's going to work out. Unity 6.1 is available with an LTS, long-term support, which means they're going to support this for up to two years with maybe an additional year if you're using enterprise or industry or something like that. So their old long-term supported version, which meant if you found bugs with the engine and needed a little more assistance from them, then they'd be able to cover something like that. With Unity 6.1 releasing, what they are saying is now they are going to have the same level as an LTS, but only until the next release is published. So when 6.2 comes around, 6.1 will lose its supported status and 6.2 will be the only one that is, well, the support version. Now that doesn't mean Unity 6.0 doesn't have long-term support. That is going to continue to have long-term support for the two years that it would normally have. Instead, these kind of minor incremental ones, 6.1, 6.2, will have this supported status. So I hope that makes sense. So to bring it more into perspective, later this year, Unity 6.3 will be released as another LTS, so another long-term supported version with full two-year support. And the plan is to release an LTS version annually going forward. So it looks like what they're doing is you'll have these kind of long-term support milestones, so 6.0 and 6.3, and then you'll have the these incremental steps like 6.1, 6.2, which will be supported while they are out, which will have the same level of support as an LTS, but when the next incremental step comes out, then it will no longer be be supported like an LTS. Yeah, what does this mean for you? If, if you want to experiment with newer features and want the latest tools, the in-between versions like 6.1 and 6.2 will work well, but if you need some more stability because your game is approaching production, maybe sticking with an LTS version like 6.0 and 6.3 will probably be the safer bet. Now, my feelings on all this is I, I do kind of like this model. I understand as a business, they can't give uh, long-term support for every single incremental step, and so I think this gives gives us a nice balance of allowing us to experiment with new features in newer releases, while also allowing them to provide LTS for a more stable foundation in milestone versions like 6.0 and 6.3. So kind of a fan, Unity, thanks. Now let's dive into what is actually new with Unity 6.1. According to Unity, they focused on three core priorities this release, which is stability, performance, and quality. So kicking things off, one of the biggest additions is Deferred Plus rendering for the Universal Pipeline. This actually is pretty significant because Deferred Plus was only available in the HDR pipeline, and now we get it with the URP pipeline. For anyone who doesn't know what Deferred Plus rendering actually is, in traditional forward rendering, the engine processes each object and applies all the lighting calculations for the object at once. This becomes inefficient when you have many light sources because each object needs to be processed multiple times, once for each light affecting it. Deferred rendering takes a different approach. It first renders all the geometric and material information into a set of buffers called G-buffers and then applies lighting as separate paths. This means each pixel only needs to be processed once for all the geometry and material properties and then the lighting is calculated afterwards. Now Deferred Plus takes this a step further by using something called cluster-based light culling. The screen is divided into 3D clusters, the engine tracks which lights affect each cluster, and this dramatically reduces the number of lighting calculations needed because the engine only processes lights that actually affect a given area. So the long and short of it is your games can handle dozens or even hundreds of dynamic lights with much better performance. Now keep in mind Deferred Plus is still targeted towards stronger GPUs, so it 
it's mainly beneficial for PC and console projects rather than uh, mobile. But for those platforms, this could be a game changer for visual rich environments with a ton of lights in it. Let's see, we also get variable rate shading, VRS or VRS, which is a more sophisticated rendering technique that could significantly boost performance in many games. This is how VRS works if you want to know. Instead of rendering every single pixel on the screen at the same resolution of detail level, VRS allows different regions of the screen to be rendered at different shading rates. So in a typical gaming scene, some areas you might want to have higher detail than others. So if you're controlling a character in the center of a screen, you'd probably want that character to have a high level of detail, while things on the peripheral or background that aren't so important, you might be able to get away with not rendering such high detail on that. And that's essentially what VRS does. It allows you to take advantage of this by reducing the shading rate in less important areas. And when you do this kind of targeted variable rate shading, you get a few key benefits, which are performance gains. So you're reducing unnecessary shading work on areas that aren't as important. The visual quality is maintained. So the most important parts of your game are going to receive full resolution shading. And then of course, energy efficiency. So if you're doing things for mobile, this is going to reduce energy consumption. So exciting news, I haven't checked this out yet, but Unity said that they have made a project available that demonstrates how to use VRS to improve performance in your project. So I'm definitely going to need to go check that out and tell you what I find. But yeah, this sounds like very interesting technology to squeeze out just a bit more performance in our engine. Now, another <clears throat> now another new feature that I don't know how it escaped my radar, uh, but they announced it and I, I, I think it's very cool, is the Project Auditor. Project Auditor is a new tool for static analysis that can scan your entire project in a identify potential issues. It analyzes your scripts, your assets, project settings, and the build itself to give you some clear insights and in how you can resolve some performance problems. So think of it as like a quick little health checkup for your project that automatically finds optimization opportunities and common mistakes. So to anyone who has spent days trying to like figure out like weird performance bottlenecks, this tool might find that little thing for you that you didn't even know to check. I, I honestly don't know why they didn't talk about this one more because it sounds very, very neat. And if it works well, then yeah, this is this is going to be my sleeper hit of 6.1. I'm going to call it here. This is my new secret uh, favorite feature. Uh, we also got some new build automation. So Unity 6.1 is going to integrate build automation directly into the editor. So this this feature is designed to help streamline your local changes into your cloud build, potentially making the build process more efficient. So you no longer have to go manually do these things. This is going to be an automated where if you have a build in the cloud, you should be able to make some local changes and then push it on up to your cloud build. So that will be very interesting if anyone out there is using the cloud production feature line. And you know what, if this automation becomes easy enough, yeah, I'm, I'm down to jump in and use it too. We're also getting web GPU support, which is still technically in the experimental phase. WebGPU is the next generation of web graphics APIs that is designed to replace WebGL eventually. While it's still marked as experimental, this is an important step for web-based Unity games going forward. Uh, I'm not someone who develops for web GPU or WebGL. So anyone in the comments, if you do, please let me know how big of a step this is. I mean, it sounds fancy to me, but but I do VR and AR, baby. And so that brings me to my next thing, which is what is missing? What are the features that haven't quite made it into 6.1? Well, the biggest one that I've been very interested in seeing come out is the new animator that they've teased here and there. And even during the live stream and all this, they haven't given us more of a concrete idea of when it's coming up. 6.x is, I think, what they told us. Uh, hopefully, I'm not misquoting. Within Unity 6, they want to release the new animator, but they're just not quite confident yet, I think, in which version of, you know, Unity 6.x it is going to be. And that's okay. I appreciate them not uh, over-promising anything. I'm just really excited for it, and I want to see what it looks like. So what do you think? Should you upgrade to 6.1? Well, if you're working on a new game and want the newest features, I say give it a crack, go play with it and see what is new. Just keep in mind when 6.2 is released, 6.1 is no longer going to be supported. Instead, 6.2 will be. And then when 6.3 comes out, that's when we get our next LTS. That's the next time we'll have 100% support for two years, for two years. Yeah, let me know in the comments what you think about these new features 
features, what Unity is doing, their new form of delivering updates to us. I'm excited to continue to see this future and cover it. And I really appreciate you guys always stopping by and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.